Shalom to my brothers and sisters who are in the body of the Messiah, for you are called the bride of the Lamb. And shalom, shalom to the scattered Hebrew Israelites who are throughout the four corners of the earth, for you are called the bride of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah is the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, my brothers and sisters, I bring you another subject that is radical. Now, many of you have heard talks about the Most High Calendar versus the Great Going Calendar. But what I'm bringing you today, this is not discussed or mentioned among our brethren and sisters. Okay? So, the title of this subject today is Israelites will never have the correct Sabbath day. Now, for those who are seasoned and, and who have been in this truth, you probably think, oh, I don't know what she's going to talk about. No, I'm bringing something new to you that, that, that you may not be aware of, because at this time, I have not heard any of the brethren talk about this. Okay? You know, the word tells us to prove all things, and when we go in the heathen's historical records, we begin to see what was done aligns with the word of the most high okay so what i'm showing to you to my brothers and sisters who are israelites you will never have the correct sabbath day i want you to really meditate on this topic today what does it mean that you would never have the correct sabbath day in this fourth beast kingdom known as the roman empire so now let us begin. Now, recently we had just celebrated the Feast of Unliving Bread. And this will tie in with that feast because we are we have learned that we need to purge the leaven from us. And that leaven represented the doctrines of man, their philosophies their ways, their thoughts, and their laws. So we need to purge that from us, which is, which is preparing us for the next holy feast, for soon we shall be filled with the doctrines of Yah, with his truth. And we shall worship him in spirit and in truth, as prophesied by the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. Okay? So what you see before you, it says this, you will always be days behind the most high calendar. And we know his calendar is made of the lights of the firmament of the heaven. And those lights are the sun, the moon, and Maseroth. And Maseroth is a Hebrew word for the 12 signs. When you read the work of Josephus, he tells you that those 12 signs is what the Gentile call the Zodiac, but we as Hebrew call it Maserat. For when you allow the word, the spirit to teach you about the most high, holy and divine calendar, you will learn that each of these lights in the heaven play a certain role in his calendar. Okay? And the heavens is in line with the earth. They're going hand in hand. Again, Connor going hand with the spiritual. But let us keep going. So, my, my fellow Israelites, you will always be days behind the Most High Calendar. What do that mean? Have you been paying attention to the heavens? Have you been keeping a record? Because if you have, you would notice what I notice. And also, have you went into <clears throat> the heathens' history? of their calendars, because in their history, it also revealed the greatest error that they made. So once you learn this fact that I'm bringing you, it's not opinion, this is fact, this is something that cannot be disputed because the heavens don't lie and numbers don't lie. Once you learn this fact today, it will bring you into the understanding of the importance of the new covenant that was established for us during the Passover, 
known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you begin to understand how important it is for you to receive it now than ever before. Because Israelites, you do not have the correct Sabbath day. Okay, now let's look at some questions here, okay? The first question you need to ask, is it the reason why we don't have the correct Sabbath day because of the curse that the Most High put upon Israel? Yes. Also, is it because of the Israelites being among the heathens? Yes. For us living among them, we learn their ways, their thoughts, their doctrines, and their philosophies. Is it also because what is written in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, verse, I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 to 25? Yes. For we know his word has to be fulfilled and it cannot come back void. Isaiah chapter 55. We'll confirm that the word has to be fulfilled. So now that we have some understanding why the Israelites would never have the correct Sabbath day, it is it's now going to bring us into how this happened. In other words, what events took place that caused them to forget the most high correct holy days and feast days? The next question to ask, what kingdom are we in? And according to the prophet Daniel, and whereas other prophets that was in the book of the 1611 Bible, it tells us that we are in the fourth beast kingdom known as the Roman Empire. And the ruling nation in this kingdom is our brother Esau. For his children, the Edomites, aka Idumeans, are the ruling nations among the Gentiles. And the Gentiles have joined themselves to him in this kingdom. Read 2nd Ezra's in the Apocrypha chapter 6, Genesis chapter 25 and chapter 27. Also read the book of Daniel, Revelation, and the second book of Ezra's, for those are the end time prophecies. And once you read those books, then read the book of Obadiah, and then you will understand what the prophet Obadiah is saying unto you. And one more chapter I want you to read. Read Psalms chapter 137. 137 relates to the book of Obadiah. But let us continue. So we in the fourth feast kingdom known as the Roman Empire. And in this empire, since we had um, celebrate the Passover, we learned what the meaning is the circumcision of the flesh also represent. We learned that the circumcision of the flesh was to remove the reproach of Egypt. What happened then is happening now. For since we have been in this fourth beast kingdom, we have the reproach of Egypt upon us. For this modern day Babylon has kept the ways of the Egyptian. See, they forced their doctrines, their philosophies, their laws and rules and customs upon my ancestors. They have taken away the covenant and we have assimilated Sorry, and we have been assimilated, forgetting the ways of our forefathers. In other words, this modern day Babylon, the fourth beast, aka Roman Empire, has modeled themselves after Egypt and Sodom. Therefore, the Israelites have forgotten the ways of their forefathers. They have forgotten the covenant. What happened in ancient Egypt is happening now. And the sacred books, such as Jubilees, the 1611, and many other, would confirm this unto you today. So we've forgotten the ways of the Most High. We've forgotten what he taught us in that covenant that he established with my ancestors. 
So as King Solomon prophesies, there is nothing new underneath the sun. But what happened then is happening again, my brothers and sisters. So the next part in question we need to look at, and this pertaining that this is going to lead us to into this new information that I'm bringing to your attention. So you can do research, but most importantly, I want you to seek the Father for his answer. Remember, these things had to occur to fulfill what the word said. For the word said that he took away the holy days and, and holy feast day from the children of Israel because they was in an, an adulterous nation. They went to serve behind they went to serve other gods. They served idols and they forsaken the most high. So for their punishment, he took away his holy days from them. The book of Hosea will confirm that unto you in chapter 2. So these questions that we are looking at now will lead us to this newfound information that I, that I want to bring to your attention. In other words, it's not new. It's been there all, all along, but hidden. But now the Most High at his appointed time is bringing it to our attention, brothers and sisters, for he wants us to return back unto him and to keep the covenant that his son now has established for us. For we learn from the season of the feast and living bread that the new covenant still is inclusive of the old covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the mystery is that now we are fulfilling the law through the spirit, okay? But enough on that. So here's the first question. What is the light of the heaven, the Gregorian calendar follow? The sun, okay? I want you to put that in your mind as forefront. So they use the sun as their guidance for their calendar. Now I want you to definitely keep that in mind, okay? Next question, does, this, does the sun give the Romans their weekly worship day? Yes. Does the sun establish what day, quote unquote, the seventh day falls on, I mean, the seventh day falls on in the Gregorian calendar? I want to read this again. Does the sun establish what day? The seventh day falls on in the Gregorian calendar. Yes. Now I have a picture for you to understand that question. Because when you study about the Gregorian calendar, you will learn it's still a Roman calendar. Okay. And, and how the Gregorian calendar came about, they also too discover a great error, a great error in their Roman calendar which brought forth the gray going calendar, okay? Because remember, they was following the sun as their guidance for their calendar. But now let's go to the proof. Now the proof we're gonna look at first is dealing with the sun circuit. <clears throat> That's what the gray going calendar is supposed to be based on, okay? So we're gonna look at that. So what I did for you, my brothers and sisters, I gave you a real simple example to show you to you the error of the heathens. Now, FYI, we as Israelites know that the Most High told us to start our year in the month of Abid, and that can be found in the book of Exodus. So I want you to keep that in mind. But I know you're probably saying, why are we looking at the sun? when the most high calendar month is based on the moon. I know what you're thinking. The reason is that we're looking at the sun because my my fellow Israelites and brothers and sisters are following a um are following the great golden calendar that's based on the sun circuit. And what I mean is they're using their weekly format 
to determine when is the Sabbath day. And what they're not aware of, their weekly format comes from dealing with the sun. So what I did for you, my brothers and sisters, I um, made a short example, very simple, so you can see the errors that the heathen's doing. And then you begin to understand why you will never have the correct Sabbath day. Okay? First example. We know in the heathen's calendar, March is usually when spring began. Okay? We also know that the moon first month can be slightly, and I say slightly, maybe just a few days, not many, before the equinox or after the equinox to start its new year, okay? Because we look at everything, because remember, agriculture has to be in line with the heavens. For you must have the barley in order to present the sheep way offering on the bid 16. In other words, the barley has to be right, okay? And you know, the word tell us that we have to keep his holy days and holy feast days in its correct season. So we can't have our first month of bid in winter, okay? It has to be in the spring season. And what I mean by that, when we get to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is Passover, has to be during the springtime, my brothers and sisters. Because during the springtime, that's when the barley is ripened. Excuse, excuse my voice. <clears throat> now, do you see why we are looking at the month March? Okay. <clears throat> now, when we look at the sun circuit, and I know, Israelites, the sun circuit do not dictate the month. But what is happening, you are following the heathen's weekly format that is based on the sun circuit. So this is what's going on. In the month of March, for example, we're gonna say that the spring equinox, also known as the vernal equinox, we're gonna say, for example, it fell on Thursday, okay? And we know Thursday is the fifth day of the week on the Gregorian calendar, all right? Here is something that you may have not known. Did you know that in the heathen's records, they would say the sun has 365 days, but when you go behind them and count the days, you would notice a great error. You would notice that in that year, it should have been 366. Go back. Those who are keeping a record of the Most High Counter would see the greatest errors that the heathens have made. Again, this is all done according to the will of the Most High. I don't want you to panic, my brothers and sisters. I just want you to listen. And you will have access to this note. I just want you to listen and pay attention to this example so you can see the error of the heathen. So let's just say the equinox known as spring of Vernon, fell on Thursday, okay? And it was March the 22nd day. And on that day, made the sun total days to be 366 days, okay? So when you study the prophet Enoch's writing, and when the spirit of wisdom is upon you, it will reveal what that means. What do the equinox mean? We know that the equinox is a day when daylight is about 12 hours and night is about 12 hours, okay? And on that day, it is the last day of the sun's 12th month. Do you see that in red right here? On that day, it is the sun 12, I'm sorry, let me say it again. On that day, it is the last day of the sun's 12th month. Right here. That's what that means. 
So for this calendar month, for example only, <coughs> we're going to say that that sun year ended with 366 days. So on Friday, which is the sixth day of the Gregorian calendar, that should be the sun's first day, which is March the 23rd. Then on Saturday, which is the seventh day on the Gregorian calendar, that would be the sun's second day, okay, which is March the 24th. Now, you're probably scratching your head, why is this important? Now, you're going about to see the errors of the heathen. But notice this. I want you to pay attention about this pattern. The number seven, we know, is a perfect number, and it's a special number. So, according to the Gregorian calendar, it says that the seventh day falls on Saturday. And how the sun circuit ended calls the sun's second day in this new year to fall on Saturday, okay? Therefore, the next seven days, okay, the next seventh day or the next quote-unquote Sabbath day will fall on the sun's days, okay? And the dates are the ninth day of the sun, the 16th day of the sun, the 23rd day of the sun, and the 30th day of the sun. Now, here's the pattern that many are not paying attention. We have to add seven, okay? Seven plus two is nine. Nine plus seven is 16. 16 plus 23 is seven. And, and I'm sorry, 16 plus seven is 23. And 23 plus seven is 30. Do you see the pattern? Okay, we're working with the number seven. So in this counter, it is saying unto you that Saturday, which you are calling the Sabbath day, that these days of the sun falls on this day. Day two of the sun, day nine of the sun, day 16 of the sun, day 23 of the sun, and day 30th of the sun, okay? Based on you using the great going calendar. Because in this month of March, it had 366 days. Now, here's the comparison. Now, this is what the heathens would do. Did you not know that the heathens are not keeping the correct total days of the sun? Because they don't even fall into heaven. And I do have dates to prove unto you when they realized this error and what they had to do. But even when they made this correction, my brothers and sisters, they still did not do it correctly. And we'll talk about that. Okay. So here's a counter example of the era of the heathens. Okay. Now, above, we just learned that Thursday should have been the 366th day of the sun, which fell on March the 5th. However, because the heathens do not pay attention to the heavens, they omitted that day and caused the first day of the sun to fall on Thursday instead of Friday, as you see above. Okay, do you see that above? Let me bring that down so you can see that above. Do you see what I'm talking about? So they omitted a whole calendar day. Now, when you understand math and numbers, that will offset the day that you are calling the Sabbath day, my brothers and sisters. Therefore, you would be in error and not have the correct day. Okay? So because they omitted, the 366th day of the sun, which fell on March, I'm sorry, not March 5th, but which fell on March the 22nd, which is the fifth day of the heathen week on their calendar, it calls the sun day to be on the wrong day. And let's look at Saturday. See, on Saturday, it should have been day two of the sun, but because they omitted the 366th day of the sun, 
it caused day three of the sun to fall on Saturday. Therefore, you will be a day behind. You will not worship on the correct day. You will worship on the wrong day. And you will be a day behind the most high holy days and holy feast days. Do you see the error that the heathens have led you into? Because when you compare March the 24th, which is Saturday, that the great going counter calls the seventh day, you will see that instead of being day two of the sun, they have it as day three of the sun. So your so-called Sabbath days will fall on day 10 of the sun, day 17 of the sun, day 24 of the sun, and day 31st of the sun, because we go in increments of seven. Do you see the great error that this fourth beast have led you into Israelites. And again, this is done uh, This is done accordingly to our father will because his word had to be fulfilled. But what he is doing, he is bringing us into the season to know the whole truth. Because see, Satan knew this day would come. So he had to make sure he put this great stomach block before you so you will not have the correct Sabbath day. Again, you cannot follow the heathen's calendar. It's not going to give it to you. All right. You got to go back to the beginning of the book to understand his calendar and to know how to get his correct Sabbath day. You got to go back to the beginning. And when you get understanding about the beginning, then you have to read the whole volume of the book to understand his calendar. Okay, take this down now to pause the screen because I want you to compare this. And um, I do have some years where you can go back and count it out yourself. And you will see the greatest errors that the heathens have you in. Okay. Another way to look at this. Because they did not honor the 366th day of the sun, it's like them skipping over Thursday and jumping straight to Friday. In other words, we have Wednesday here. They did not honor Thursday at all and they skip over Friday, which would cause a great shift in your seven weekday continuous cycle. You will jump instead you will, you will go straight from Wednesday to Friday, Saturday, causing Sunday to fall on your seventh day of the week. Again, numbers don't lie and the heavens don't lie. Now, do not panic, my brothers and sisters, because now you get coming to the understanding about this new covenant. Remember, the Father know all and sees all. And he said he was the one that caused this upon you, but he's showing you how it was done and how he used the heathen to fulfill his word in keeping the Israelites from keeping the correct Sabbath day. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now I want to read a note to you in this, in this calendar here. So as you can see, the heathen skip a day causing you Israelites to never have the correct seventh day to worship. This has been ongoing for years. The last correction was made in 1582 in Italy and in America, it was made in 1752. Oh, it's in their records. But when they made this correction, <laughs> they still did it wrong. And what I have did for you, my brothers and sisters, I have put the link to videos that would give you the breakdown, but most importantly, would give you access to those links. For example, when you go to the video that deals with American counter missing 13 days, when you go to the video description box, I have put the links where you can have access to those sites. Okay. Let me see this one.
Yeah, here you go. It's under the Google, the Google Notes right here. And in the Google Notes, you will have links to all those resources that I went to so you can have access to those sites so you can do a study and seek the most high for his truth. Okay. Now I see in the list one of those one of those videos now has been made private by a person that I had um put in the list to share. But look at the America counter missing 13 days, which fulfilled the prophecy in Daniel 7, 7, verse 23 to 25. Also, look at the one dealing with the 10 days of the great golden calendar. I'm sorry, look at the one of the 10 missing days of the great golden calendar. And there you will have access to the Google document to get the resource links that I use so you can see the greatest errors that the heathens made. And they can and their calendar is still ongoing. It's still making the same error because it does not follow the heavens. So you will have access to this playlist so you can have access to the resources. Okay. I don't expect you to watch the videos. Okay. Let me say that again. I don't expect you to watch all the videos. But what I want you to do, get those resources that I'm using. So you can go back and research these things yourself. And I want you to get understanding about numbers and math. And if you're not good in math, find someone that is. Because the Most High is telling me to bring this up to you. In the calendar format, remember I told you about the pattern of seven. Because you know the Most High may seven, a divine number, a holy number, and it's perfect. Okay? So when you look at the calendar, when you look at its format of the numbers, and we're going to look at March 2018, it's a pattern there. And let me show you the pattern. When you go down each column of numbers, it should add up. It should be a difference of seven, okay? Until that month is restarted and then the format start all over again. For example, when we look at Thursday, we have number one. If we go down the co column, when we add seven to one, what we get what? Eight. When we add seven to eight, we get what? 15. When we add seven to 15, we get 22. And when we add seven to 22, we get 29. Do you see that pattern? That's very important to remember because when you look at the error that the heathens make, it's not honored. Even if they skip more than seven days, again, it has to be in numbers of seven, like seven, 14, 21, 28. For example, when they realized they were so far behind so many days from the most high <laughs> counter, but for them, they was using the sun. When they realized they were so many days behind the sun, when they tried to correct the error, they didn't do it correctly, okay? So let's just say day one. And on day one, which is Thursday, March 1st or March 2018, they realized they was about so many days behind the sun. So if they skip the eighth day of March and go down to the 15th, it would still fall in the number of seven. For example, they skip eight. So seven plus one is eight. But eight plus seven is 15. It should still fall in that pattern of seven. Okay. But when they made the correction, they started on the they started on the wrong day of the weekday. Because they did not they did not do the math correctly. In other words, they had figured out how many days they were behind the sun circuit or how many days behind i'm sorry they did figure out how many days they was behind the sun year but when they tried to correct it on their calendar they did not start on the on the correct day of the week of the calendar okay and in those videos it would show you pictures to understand what i'm telling you here in this video okay you'll see it 
The best way to also see their error is look at the original calendar before they made the changes and you will see how they they i'm sorry and you will see how they truly messed up okay so now let me read this again the heathen skip a day causing you israelites to never have the correct seventh day to worship this has been ongoing for years the last correction was made in 1582 in italy and in America, 1752. So no other more corrections have been made, my brothers and sisters. See, first Italy done it, then America came in line in 1752, all right? After, since then, no other correction has been made. And now we are in the year of 2018. Just look at how many years has went by. Look at it. It's a lot of time that has went by. It's about between over somewhere between two, 200 to 300 years that has went by. That's a lot of time for that error to be ongoing. Again, the heathen does not follow the heavens. Genesis 1.14. Also here it says a sun circuit is 365 days for three years. And in the fourth year is 366 days. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might say, well, they do all do that. Mm -mm. Again, you have to go behind and count, go behind and check them because the year that they are telling you is 366, according to the heavens, it's 365. The year that they are telling you that it's 365, go back and count. But the heavens is telling you it's actually 366. The evidence is there. Okay. So on a seven weekday continuous cycle of the Romans calendar, if you miss one day of the sun, your worship day shall always be off for the heathens do not follow. Genesis 1 verse 14. They don't follow it. Remember, they are using the sun as their light in the firmament of the heaven to dictate unto them the days. Mm -hmm. And because they are using the sun, they are emitting days of the sun, therefore throwing off your seventh day. Throwing off your Sabbath day to worship because they're not keeping it correctly. So as the years go by you, Israelites, that omitted day will be increasing. Before you know it, you will be 10 days behind the most high calendar, throwing off the Sabbath day that you are keeping. Okay? So as I said before here, I'm going to read this sentence here. It says, Israelites, you have been losing time and are days behind the most high calendar because we are still falling behind the format of the heathen okay now the next thing we need to look at is that i know we all not want to agree <clears throat> on what format our calendar should be but these are the three things you must have in your calendar you have to honor Genesis 1, 14. I mean, I say Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, because it said the lights. And that light, that word light has an S. It's pure. It's not just one light we are keeping a record of. It said the light. Okay. So I have an example of the most high calendar. And in his calendar, you should have these lights. You should be keeping a record of, such as the moon. Okay, that's one light. The second light is the sun. You should be keeping up with the days of the sun. And the third light, you should be keeping up with Maseroth. Okay, Maseroth, which the heathen call the zodiac, but we call it in Hebrew Maseroth, which means the twelve, the twelve signs, the twelve star constellation. Okay. And your 
weekly format should be like day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and then Sabbath. Okay. Now, I know this is where we shall agree to disagree. When you study the 1611, see the most high don't leave you hanging. He gives you a formula by a prophet. This is why you see my day one of the moon is separate from the week. You have to study Numbers 28 and Numbers chapter 29, also the work of Josephus, because then you begin to understand why the new moon day is separate from the week. Again, the most high ways is not our ways and thoughts is not our thoughts, as prophesied by Isaiah chapter 55. <clears throat> we have to get out of the ways of the heathen. We have to remove the reproach of Egypt from us, not only carnally, but spiritually. It starts from within. You have to unharden your heart. You have to circumcise your heart. And the heart I'm talking about is your soul. And within your soul is your mind. That's where it starts. So your calendar, whether you agree with me this, with this format or not, it must have, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, you must keep a record of the sun, the moon, and Maserat. And that's what makes up the most high calendar. Okay. Let me scroll down here so that you can see I'm keeping up with the moon, the sun, and Maserat. Okay. And let it go down a little bit more. I just want you to see how it looks towards the end. And see, my calendar has a lot of stuff because I keep it with a lot of notes and other things that happen in the heavens. And I also listed biblical events as well. All right. Now let's go back to the notes. So now that you have seen an example, what your calendar must have, again, you must be keeping up with the sun, the moon, and Maserat. Okay. Now you can go back and find in the heathen records when the sun should have 366 days by doing your count yourself. Go behind them. Check them. For in the year of 2002 to 2003, there was a total of 366 days for the sun year. For the year of 2006 to 2007, it was 366 days for the sun year. And in 2010 to 2011, it was also a total of 366 days. These are just some of the years I'm giving unto you. And you will see that the heathen would say it was 365. So that's already three days according to these years that has been omitted. I also made a formula because here's the thing about keeping up with a heathen's calendar and with the most high calendar. It can be over ramming. And it can be confusing. This is why you have to write it out to see what the Most High is trying to show you about his truth of the calendar. So when the heathens do not have an extra day in February known as leap year, you will add 334 days to whatever days you have left in March that follow after the equinox to March up to the equinox. For example, if the equinox fall on March 20th, then you would count the 21st through through the 31st. Okay, a March. You would not count March 20th as your day. Remember, the equinox day is the last day of the sun 12 month. Okay? So when you count from the 21st through the 31st, you get a total of 11 days. So if the equinox ended on the 20th day of March of the next following year of the heathen's <laughs> calendar, you would put down 20 days. So you would add 11 to 334, that'll be 345, to 20, that'll be 365. 
that's how you do it. When you have a leap year, again, that's when they add an extra date to February, you use the same formula, but instead of adding 334 days to those numbers that you get from March, you would instead add 335 days, okay? Take this time now to pause your screen to get that formula. That's how you can go back and check behind the heathen. And timeanddate.com is a good site to use um, to go back and see what the heathens have done. Because the heavens don't lie. Okay? Now we're going to look at this question. Did the Gregorian calendar or any of the Roman calendars start with creation? No. And the reason why I'm bringing this question up because a lot of my fellow brothers and sisters are quick to say, well, the sun, the moon, and Maseroth didn't begin until the fourth day of creation. And they want to use that as an excuse to say that, that it cannot give you the most high Sabbath day. Again, you have been taught in the ways of the heathens. But when you read Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3, you will learn it's a deeper clue that many of you leave out, okay? This is why you see me written this in blue, for it says that Genesis 1.14 gives you the time indicator for who? For man. See, it won't made for the most high. It was made for you, Adam, O oh, sons and daughters of Adam, mankind. It was made for you because you need to learn how to understand time. The father didn't need that. He made that for you. So one of the hints I list in this parentheses, it says that the days in creation, I'm sorry, the days in creation in Genesis chapter one are not based on a 24 hour period. This is one of the greatest errors why my brothers and sisters are having a hard time understanding, understanding Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. For you're looking at this, for you looking at creation on a small scale. Remember, the most high time is different from your time. And the answer can be found in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. Also, it can be found in the book of Peter and the book of Psalm to understand the most high time. Think about it. Again, I want to stress to you, the days in creation that is, that is written in Genesis chapter 1 is, are not based on a 24-hour period. Again, we got to get understanding from our Father. We have to know how he thinks, what is his ways and his thoughts, because we truly has been indoctrinated by the heathens. We got to remove that reproach of Egypt off of us. We have to remove the reproach of Babylon off of us. So my question to you, my brothers and sisters, why are you following the heathen's counter and not Genesis chapter 1, verse 14? And we know that the Most High Counter is consistent of the sun, the moon, and Maserat. So why are you not keeping records of this? Why are you only keeping one part? Like some of y'all only just keep a record of the moon but not trying to understand how the sun works and how Maserat works with the moon and how these things align with the earth and how agriculture align with his calendar. Everything has to come in this proper season. Which brings us this to this question. And I want you to meditate on this question. Think about this, because y'all following the Great Going Calendar weekly format. Y'all following them. For, for this question is asking you, does the sun dictate what is the Sabbath day? Because that's what you are saying unto me when you follow the great going calendar and you're not following the heavens. And the great going calendar came about in 1582 AD. Okay. And we are in the seventh day from Adam, which is within, which is in the 7,000 year period, which is the 12,000 year from creation. That's, that's the period we're in now. Okay. So you're following 
a heathen's calendar to give you the most high Sabbath day. Think about it. Would he actually give it to you? No. Even when you go to the previous Roman calendars before the Gregorian calendar came about, that didn't even start with creation. So you're going to tell me that a heathen calendar is more superior to what the father created in the heavens when he told you in Genesis 1.14 that these lights in the firmament of heaven shall be made for signs, for seasons, for days, highlight days, for days and for years. He's telling you these are your time in the care. In other words, that's your watch. Those three lights are made for you so you can understand about time. But yet you want to tell me that because it was made in the fourth day of creation, it won't give you the correct time on the most high when he made that himself? Do, 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 you, do you hear what I'm hearing? That sound kind of off, don't it? You're telling me that he made these lights in the firmament in the heaven, and because it was made in the fourth day of creation, you're telling me it won't align with his time when he made that himself? Think about it. But yet you're telling me that the great going counter who is made by the heathens, made by mankind, that does not follow the heavens, don't even follow the, the sun circuit, but you want to tell me that is more correct to give me his weekly format. But the father gave you his word. The father gave you his prophets. And prophet Ezekiel gave you the formula. But you want to reject the word and the truth. I want you to really think about this. Does the son dictate what day is the Sabbath day? Because if you say yes, guess what? The heathens are omitting the days of the sun from their calendar, throwing everything off. This is something to really think about. Now, my Israelite brothers and sisters, prove to me, this is what I want you to do. I want you to prove to me that the weeks are a continuous seven day cycle. That means, let me finish reading the thing. First. Now, my Israelite brothers and sisters, prove to me that the weeks are a continuous seven day cycle with scriptures from the King James 1611, including the hidden books and the work of Josephus. Now, when you go to the work of Josephus, I know because I've been in that book now, front and back, you're going to see those pagan terms inserted like Sunday or this. But there are some events that Josephus give us to let us know that the great going calendar is off. Mm -hmm. One of them I just gave to you in this video. It's another one. Mm -hmm. And when you take those events or those standards that the Israelites follow and always follow it, they always kept it. You would come to learn that it cannot flow on a great going calendar. It can only flow on the most high calendar that made of the sun, the moon, and Maserat. So when you go in the works of Josephus, I know what y'all gonna dive in and what, and what what you may send it to and what you may send to me. But you have to understand that was a transliteration done by the Gentiles. So they have a little twist on it. But all thanks. To the most high, he put blinders upon them. For there was two things that the most high let me found in the work of Josephus that would confirm unto you that the great going calendar is an error with everything. It's an error with their months, with their years, and even with their weekly format they are giving unto you. He showed it. Again, you in order to receive this truth, you have to be willing to unharden your heart. You have to remove that reproach of Egypt off of you. And then you will begin to get an understanding of this covenant, of this new covenant and what it covers. 
Okay. So when I'm saying that, prove this unto me. When I say the weeks are a continuous seven day cycle, that what I'm asking you, prove to me that the week is ever going. In other words, it never stops. Prove that to me with scriptures from the uh, from the Bible, the 1611. Prove that to me from the hidden books and prove that to me from the work of Josephus. I want you to prove it to me because guess what? I try to go in there and find it myself. I was just like you, my brothers and sisters, thinking that we had the correct Sabbath day, but when the Father showed me, we did not. Because we was not following Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. So prove that to me through the scriptures, not by your opinions, but through his word, that the weeks are continuous. That means never stopping, ongoing, forever. Prove that. Okay. Also in the same book, and I mentioned this before, but I just want to read it again. In the same book, which is the 1611, there's a form that the Most High has given for his calendar. And it can be found in Ezekiel chapter 46, for it aligns with the lights in the heavens that is written in Genesis 1.14 and with agriculture. Again, we read this again. Ezekiel chapter 6, for it is aligned with the lights in the heaven and with agriculture. Do you see how the heaven going hand with the earth? How the spiritual going hand with the carnal? These two things have to align. Again, you will have the link to the um, playlist so you can get all the resources to get understanding about what the heathen did when they was so many days behind the sun year, a.k.a. the sun circuit. So to sum all this up, Israelites, you will never have the correct Sabbath day. You will always be behind. I'm sorry. You will always be days behind the most high calendar. And his counter consists of the sun, the moon, and Maserat. Now, do you understand the importance of the new covenant? Because if you have studied the new covenant along with the old, you will learn that because of this curse and because of what the Most High had allowed the heathens to teach us, we was guaranteed to never to keep his holy day. We was guaranteed never to have the correct Sabbath day. And to have understanding what is his true Sabbath day, it comes by the Spirit. First, and what is written in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, that what the Spirit shall teach us now is truth. And when you learn what is his Sabbath day, you will learn it will not go. Okay, let me say this again. You will learn that. It'll be hard to keep it in this kingdom for the way it's because they have the whole world following their calendar. And because they have them following the gray going calendar, it is not aligned with the heaven. And this is why it'll be hard for you to follow what to do on the Sabbath day. And that, let me correct myself. It'll be hard for you to follow what to do on the Sabbath day. That's why I mean to be like, it's hard to keep it. But when you learn the truth of what this fourth, what, or what this fourth beast have done, what the Romans have done, what the Edomites have done, when you learn what they have done, you will see why we cannot cross our T's and dot our I's. You will see why the Messiah had to establish a new covenant. Therefore, we shall what keep the Sabbath day the best way we can. But we fulfill the Sabbath day through the Messiah spirit, he who dwelled in us. That's how we fulfill it. So we, so we keep a memorial of the Sabbath because we know the day is coming when we will worship the Most High correctly. All T's will be crossed and all, and all I's will be dotted, for it will be done perfectly. 
But what the Father wants you to do, he wants you to focus on your heart, your soul. And within your soul, you have a mind, that voice that you hear, that no one hears, that voice that speaks. For the Father can see your true intentions. He wants you to start with your heart on the inside to purge the things of man. And once those things have been purged out from you, circumcised from you, then you can be filled with the things of y'all. Then with inside yourself, inside your heart slash soul, you will find a delight in keeping his holy and holy feast day. And then his spirit will show you how to keep it in the fourth, in the fourth beast kingdom. A mystery that many are not understanding. For you will learn is not done by your righteousness now. It is done by the righteousness of Yehovah. Okay. Said enough. Taught enough. Continue to preach the gospel that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 10. Baptize the people in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. For the Lamb set the example of the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism. And the apostle continued with both. So my brothers and sisters, do not panic. Seek our Father in heaven for this truth of what I'm giving unto you. Read Luke 11, verse 9 through 13. And embrace this new covenant that the Messiah made for us. Embrace it. Because now you begin to understand how to keep the Sabbath. Now you begin to understand what is the correct Sabbath day. Now you begin to understand that the great going counter can never give you his Sabbath day. For that counter is too many days behind his calendar. So this concludes. Israelites would never have the correct Sabbath day. You will always be days behind Yahuwah's calendar. Now, do you understand the importance of the new covenant? Think about it. Shalom.